Now, in terms of how this Washington Post reporting tonight relates to the obstruction of justice investigation that's underway at the FBI, I want to bring in Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan. All right, well, Ms. McQuaid, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure, Joy. Thanks for having me. So just your initial thoughts on learning that the President of the United States actually created and dictating, dictated the talking point that Donald Trump Jr. would then use to explain this meeting with uh, several Russian nationals. Well, the statement, of course, turned out to be misleading based on what we later learned about it. And although it's not a crime to lie to the media or the public in any way, um, the story is nonetheless very significant because it could provide additional evidence to the special counsel, Robert Mueller, in an obstruction of justice investigation. Uh, you know, a key element in obstruction of justice is that a person acted corruptly. Corruptly just means bad purpose. And so if we see President Trump trying to conceal the truth regarding his campaign's involvement with the Russia campaign, then uh, his efforts to end the investigation investigation with, with Jim Comey uh, takes on some of that bad purpose, more evidence of that bad purpose. So I think this is a very significant story. Yeah, and the implication, I don't know if it strikes you the same way, the implication seems to me that Donald Trump, at least, and his advisors knew the actual contents, uh, knew what that meeting was about and decided to use a different story, uh, unless he simply didn't talk to Donald Trump Jr., didn't talk to Jared Kushner, invented a reason and then imposed it on Trump Jr. Does, does that make any sense? Well, you know, I, I would think that uh, Robert Mueller would want to try to get to the bottom of it by talking to as many people as he could. But uh, the, the fact that uh, Donald Trump is out there uh, misleading the public is what prosecutors refer to a, as a consciousness of guilt effort. If you're out there um, telling a story that later turns out to be not true, you know, people begin to ask what were the motives for that. And one motive might be you were trying to conceal the truth because you know you're guilty of a crime. And does this now set up a potential for Robert Mueller to want to interview Donald Trump to find out whether he knew the contents of those emails when he invented this talking point. Well, I'm sure he would love to ask him that question, but my guess is he will refrain from doing so. Typically, what you want to do in an investigation is gather as much information as you can from documents and lower-level participants in a conspiracy to learn as much as you can so that uh, if and when you have the opportunity to confront uh, someone who might be considered the very big fish in a case like this, uh, you would have it. So my guess is he would refrain from doing that at this point. But at some point, he may very well want to ask those questions. Well, the four people who um, are in involved here. You have Paul Manafort, who was the campaign chairman at the time. You have Jared Kushner, who was in charge of the digital and other aspects of the campaign. And you have Donald Trump Jr. All three received this email. It was in their inbox. Was it bounced back? Then they all got it. And it had that headline, Russia, Clinton, highly confidential. Um, would Robert Mueller want to interview each of them and then look for discrepancies either in their stories or in what Donald Trump says later? And if so, if there are discrepancies, what would be the consequences? Yeah, I think he, he absolutely would want to talk with them about that. I know that Jared Kushner gave the statement that, you know, he receives many emails a day. He didn't read all the way through down to the chain. But the subject line itself said Russia, you know, campaign, personal and confidential. So it had some red flags there that it's very difficult, I think, for people to ignore. And I think uh, someone who is seeking to learn the truth would want to ask all three of them about that. And, uh, you know, it is a crime to provide a false statement to investigators uh, or to commit perjury. And so if the stories don't match up, that would certainly be cause for uh, further investigation to try to figure out which one's true and uh, which one might be making a false statement. Wow. Uh, the heat just got hotter. Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan, thanks so much for your time tonight. Thanks very much, Joy. Thank you. And just to recap where we are right now on this mega news tonight, a bombshell report from the Washington Post this evening reporting that Donald Trump himself dictated the misleading statement initially released by his son, Donald Jr., about his meeting with a Russian lawyer last summer during the campaign. But that's not the only big breaking news tonight out of the White House. We also learned today of a staffing shakeup that set a new record. We are quite literally in unprecedented territory right now. The very latest on the shortest service White House communications director ever is coming up next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.